Hi everyone and welcome back to a new lesson. This time we get to talk about some dribbling, shooting, rebounding. So let's keep on watching and get going. This week's rule of the game, we are going to talk about illegal hands and what that looks like. So for example, if I'm playing defense on you, you have the ball, you're dribbling, um, what an illegal, illegal hands would look like is if I'm slapping your hand or if I'm tugging on your hand or I'm tugging on your uniform, to for you to lose control of the ball that would be an elite that's something that I would either get called a foul or I would get talked to so that's some things we want to stay away from now I can keep my if you are dribbling the ball I can reach and try and get the ball as long as I get just the ball and I don't slap your hand or get your leg or hit you in any way if I were to get just the ball then that would be okay so, two things, no slapping or tugging on your hands, and I would not tug on your uniform. So this drill helps with enforcing the form of raising it up and releasing it with one hand. Oftentimes, especially with younger kids, they develop a habit of getting more power of like throwing the ball.
push up. Oh, you're doing different directions. So, and not the reverse, but the hero will be, will be talking about the spin gear. So with this one, if I was facing it, this, the objective of this table is you want to use this to um, change direction when the defense is really efficient or like you're really committed towards the side that you're facing. So if I were facing this side, you know, protecting my spin, and you're heavily committing towards pressuring me on this side, I would want to get to this side away from the pressure. So it's a lot of pressure. And a lot, it's a lot of pressure on my knee. So I'll be here. I'll demonstrate it. So here. So what that looks like is you're dribbling, hand up, check, you'll drop front foot and move the ball over to this side and get it to your left hand. And this gives you an open lane to create and move towards the opposite direction that you were facing originally. So uh, if the ball were to touch my left hand, it would go like this. So that's when the switch will change the direction. I can help you get out of a situation where you take heavy traffic Suggesting an injury to get you over here. Here. So here I'll demonstrate the difference. This week's dribbling, we are going to ta talk about a backboard rebound. Now, what that looks like is very self-explanatory. So, let's say the ball was shot and it would hit right about here. The backboard came back to me. I got that rebound. That would be a backboard rebound. So, it would hit anywhere back here for it to be the backboard rebound. and. Sometimes I even might want to hit it to bounce back to myself to then get a better angle or a better shot. How to get open on the curve. You all, it's necessary to have the skill and the offensive belief, but if you can't receive a pass, then your skills are kind of, aren't going to impact the game instantly at least. So, with basketball, it really is important that you just get, even just, a yard of separation. That one yard and one can make one yard of separation can make the biggest difference between you being, you being open and receiving a pass to bouncing a pass a whole quarter of your team at half. So with this you want to make sure that if a defender is just really tight on you and denying you a passing lane, then you want to keep them honest by cutting back short. If he's giving you a little more space, then you want or you might want to find different angles, different changes in uh, direction. Change your speed. All those things can help the play, help get your team back to the play. That recap that finding an open passing lane, changing your direction, changing your speed, finding the uh, giving a different angle for the passer to have a passing lane to get to, or if the defender is being tight on you, you need to cut back short to be honest. Because by him being tight on you, him or her being tight on you. Backdoor, he sacrifices the play to the three person play, and this one is called the flash and backdoor cut. So, this play involves three three players in which. So, here we have the setup we have the ball handler, we have a perimeter player, and a player inside the paint. And each three are occupied with defenders. So, the ball handler has the nearest defender. The the opposite perimeter player has a defender playing very tight, and the player inside the paint has this defender. 
we move on to this play or to this picture and this player inside the paint is flashing to receive the ball so the ball handler throws the ball overhead into the four or five which is in this case the power forward or the, or the center and here we have the overplayed perimeter player so as you can see the defender is very tight and with a defender being very tight they're susceptible to the backdoor cut so the ball is going to get played in, into the center here the perimeter player will step out high forcing the defender to follow and then which opens space behind the, the defender for the backdoor cut the center will play the bounce pass into space for the, the ball hand for the player to receive the ball and have an opportunity to score. So there's the back there's the flash and backdoor cut involving three players. For this week's defensive tip, it is how we would turn our if our defender or our opponent and how we would make our opponent reverse. So what does that look like? Let's say you are playing defense on me. I have the ball, and if you were able to turn me around to where I give you my back, that is a turn, you turning me. So what that would look like is if you have the ball, I'm playing defense on you, I would be up close to you, or I would be pushing you to your non-dominant hand. So let's for, for me, you would be pushing me towards my le left side so that I would have to dribble with my left, not feel comfortable enough, to where I would turn my back to protect the ball. And then that give, that puts me in a disadvantage because once I turn my back, I can't see my teammates and it's easier for you to be able to reach and get my get just the ball. So that's what it would look like. Once you push me and put me in an uncomfortable situation where I have to turn and give you my physically give you my back, that would be you turning me. And that is what we can use on our opponent. Basketball related tip. So this drill is called the wave drill. The wave drill is how it works is you have a partner and the person that's performing the drill and then the partner is going to give commands. So the first variation is the, part, the partner will yell defense and then get into the defensive position. The partner will yell defense and then the drill, the person performing the drill will get into a defensive stance Partner points, he'll slide, he will slide to right or left, slide right, partner goes left, slide left. But the partner can also, aside from moving side to side laterally, the partner can point forward and then he attacks, which is to create his slide or diagonal back for his move and attack. So you'll do a two step and your attack step vary based off of if the partner will perform it. That, so you have a total of six different um, commands. So next slide, step to the right, slide step to the left, attack, forward and direction, the diagonal, abdomen, diagonal, the opposite direction, retreat, retreat. Another variation that you have is partner or DL rebound. Jump off two feet with your hands in the air as if performing a rebound. The partner will also command fast break and then move straight forward. And the partner will also command loose ball and then loose from the floor as if performing a rebound. You can mix in this drill by two people, or you can mix in the different commands just to give different looks and maybe work on your fitness. Now for this week's mental aspect, we are going to talk a little bit about ways we can challenge ourselves. Now, if I know I'm a super good dribbler and I dribble very well, just with my right hand, I would challenge myself by trying my right hand. Or if I know I'm a super good three-point shooter, I would challenge myself by taking 
a little closer shots or a little further. If I wanted to improve my left handed layups, I would start close to the basket, just use my left hand, I would get the motion down, maybe I would scoop back, shoot with my left, and then I would add the running, the running, the approach, and the shot. And it's hard to do something that you're not good at, but remember, the more practice we get, the better we become at whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. So just remember to keep pushing and it's okay to not feel comfortable because that's why we're practicing it to improve it later and be able to use it in a game.